I used to think that it meant there was something wrong with me. It was like, oh, I can't control my emotions. Like, I must be crazy. There must be something wrong with me. It's embarrassing and it's not really easy for me to admit that. So that leaves me with $1,000 to put in to savings. We're really getting personal here, you guys. Like we are officially besties now. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to your healthy and wealthy girl reset for the month of April. April is here, spring is here, and I could not be more excited. Today is April 1st, it is a gorgeous day and I am sitting in my new filming corner. Just like enjoying the sun, it feels so good. I'm so excited for another monthly reset together. Every single month I try and shake these up and really just create a day or two or just a vlog and a video that is really aligned with what I need and a reset that is aligned with what I need. I love taking a little bit of time at the beginning of every month to set some goals and think about my budgeting, tidy up the house, do a workout, do things that make me feel good. However, I can't say I really have this like strict formula. If I were to have a formula, this reset that we're doing today is going to be like completely off the rails of that formula because today's reset is all about how rest can be and is so productive. I do wanna set goals in this reset and I do wanna talk about finances. I specifically wanna talk about some of my financial goals, just kind of wrapping up March's budget. But first and foremost, I really need to rest. March was such a intense month for me. I feel like it was a really, really long month. So much happened kind of in my personal life, but also career-wise, like so much was going on and I'm really proud of myself for staying pretty much level-headed throughout it all. But now, you know, being at the end of the month slash beginning of the new month, I feel so exhausted. And I know that if I were to keep pushing myself, I would be really going into kind of like a burnout territory. So I just wanna stop it right now and actually take some time to rest. So today being Easter Monday, I told myself, take the day off, Zoe rest, let that be your monthly reset because I know that rest right now is the absolute best thing I can do for myself to go forward and have an amazing month of April. So I hope you guys will enjoy this video. My hope is that it just feels like a fun catch up with a friend, getting ready together for a new month. I thought we could start out the video with a little bit of some February reflections and I wanna give you guys a taste of my goals for April as well. So I'm gonna open up the goal and habit tracker. This goal and habit tracker has been such an amazing addition to my life. I started using it in January, 2024. It is from Press Reset, which is an online shop founded by Kaylin Kerbler, who is also a YouTuber. What you are currently seeing on the screen is my annual dashboard. So I set all of these goals in my new year's reset and everything within this habit tracker what i love so much about it is this all happens within a google sheet so this is a tab on my computer that i just leave open all of the time i usually have it open to the monthly tab but it's always nice to go back and check in on the annual dashboard to see if i am moving towards my goals taking a look at this right now i can check off traveling to florida and I can check off doing another no spend week because I did do one in the month of March. So this is the annual dashboard. Now tabbing over to the monthly dashboard, this is where you can come in and really, really get granular with your goal setting. Once again, because it's a Google sheet, everything is super interactive. So you guys just saw me check off the little boxes and the formula automatically colors it and crosses it out. It's just so satisfying. I love how it automatically updates with the date. We have a quote every single month and the goals are broken down between personal, wellness, financial, and career goals, as well as spiritual goals. If we scroll down, we have this habit tracker, which I personally love. You guys can see there were a lot of habits that I kind of slacked on in the month of March. So I've actually updated the habit tracker for April just to make it a little bit more simple. That's actually something that I really wanna do in April is not trying to do everything and be everywhere kind of all at once. <laughs> I really, really tried to kind of go all in and go really hard in March and I did, but I'm not ready to repeat that in April. So I definitely wanna simplify. But all that to say, I love this habit tracker. And at the bottom, we have weekly to-do lists and we have a monthly reflection. So you have a brand new tab every single month. And the other thing that I love, for me, this spreadsheet has 
completely replaced Notion because with Notion, every single month I was having to duplicate and delete and re-edit. This is all done for me. So all I have to do is come in and actually write out my goals. It's already all set up. It's already looking super aesthetic. All of the formulas are in there. It's just made my monthly resets a lot simpler and I just love it so much. So for April, oh, I have to change this to 2024. So you guys can see that we have a bunch of years in here. So you get to reuse this spreadsheet over and over and over again. Now, when it comes to my goals, I'm not gonna read all of these right now, but since we're at the beginning of the video, I'll just share with you some of my big goals for April. The first one is that I want to give myself a week off. It's not gonna be a total week off because I'm giving myself a week off to do a bunch of admin things that I haven't done and have been putting off. Just like important <laughs> businessy stuff that I would much rather be editing or filming videos. So I'm taking a week off to finish it. Another big goal of mine career wise is to dive into teaching bar. I've been teaching bar once a week. I've been doing two classes on the same day once a week. And I'm so excited that starting in April, I'm going to have a second day of the week teaching. Also in March, I started picking up some extra shifts, picking up some substitution classes, and it's just been so fun diving more into that fitness world. So that's kind of a path that I want to keep going and exploring and just getting better, just becoming more confident as a bar instructor, learning new moves and new exercises that I can bring to class. That's definitely up there on the goals. Keep on training Maggie, keep reading, keep drinking water. But April overall, I just want it to be a lot simpler. Oh, and April is really the month where I wanna start focusing on my finances and making big strides towards my financial goals. But we'll talk more about that later. So just scrolling down quickly, you guys can see that I updated the habit trackers. So there are much fewer habits that I'm going to be tracking. Things like my physio exercises and meditation, like I just never did them. And every day it was just a reminder that I wasn't doing them. So I was like, I'm, I'm giving up on those for now. <laughs> The ones that I was doing were the ones that were probably most important to me. So waking up early, taking my supplements, drinking water, this I have, I struggle with, but it's important. Working out, doing Maggie's training, another one that I kind of struggled with in March, and then also going to bed early. These are the core things that I wanna work on. And then from there, I'll be able to add on more goals and build instead of once again, trying to do everything. It can be so overwhelming and I do this all the time where I set the goals of like drink water, workout, sauna, run, meditate, journal, like, oh my gosh, like we only have so many hours in a day. So I just want to like simplify and prioritize it's spring. It's beautiful. I want to enjoy the outdoors and just not feel like I'm running around stressed all the time. So that's a little tour of my goal and habit tracker, specifically with what I'm going to be focusing on for April. To me, it's always just such a joy and such a nice time when I sit down to fill out that spreadsheet. And again, I keep the tab open on my computer all the time so I can constantly be checking things off as I go. It just helps me to feel accomplished and I feel proud of myself every time I check off one of those little boxes. Plus it helps me stay super organized, super easily. So huge thank you to Press Reset for being such an amazing partner on my channel, sponsoring this monthly reset. I highly recommend checking out that spreadsheet. I will have it linked below along with my discount code so you can save some money on your purchase. Later on in this video, I do wanna do a little bit of like some journaling together, setting like our theme and our affirmations for the month. <laughs> the sun is like so blinding, but it feels so good. And I also really wanna talk about budgeting and finances and just kind of fun it. <laughs> wrapping up March's budget and seeing if I can accomplish some of the financial goals that I set for March as well because I promised myself that April was the month that I kind of get my finances together so that's to come in a minute so I know we've already been chatting for a little while but I wanted to have a little bit of like a mental health chat at the beginning of this video so get ready for a chatty video you guys I hope like buckle up your seatbelts grab a snack grab a tea I mean, you already know what to expect on my channel. But yeah, I wanted to just, yeah, chat about mental health because I feel like it's important. And it also is just gonna kind of set the tone of like why I need to have this like very restful reset. So the past, I wanna say the past week, my mental health has honestly been shit. It's been really bad and I've really been struggling. And I've noticed a very interesting pattern, which is what I wanna talk about. So that pattern is that there will be periods where I cram myself busy. 
I overbook myself. I, you know, I, I really throw myself into, usually it's to do with work. I'll really, really throw myself into work and then piling on, um, you know, social, social obligation sounds bad, but like, you know, mixing in your social life and, and seeing your friends, which leads to me waking up super, super early. Like I will wake up really early because I'm like anxious and ready to go because I know I have so much work. And there are times where in the moment that feels really good. And I, you know, feel like I'm waking up with drive and ambition, but then I'm also staying up late and I kind of get this like adrenaline that wakes me up in the morning and doesn't always let me know that I'm tired or that maybe I need to keep sleeping or maybe I need to sleep in a little bit more that day. So basically I'm like, go, go, go all throughout the month and I'm feeling good, I'm feeling productive. I'm kind of getting like, almost like a high from, you know, being productive and I'm so happy. And that's, you know, that that's all good and great. The problem is, and the problem was in March was that I was not taking moments to rest. I'm gonna get it like a touch morbid for a second, but when my grandmother passed away and we were driving over to Southwestern Ontario where they live, I brought my computer and I was working in the car. And when we went back to the hotel, I was like feeling pulled to work and to do stuff on my computer. Like I was writing press releases in bed the night after my grandmother's funeral. And like, what? <laughs> It's embarrassing and it's not really easy for me to admit that, but it's like, I should have taken that weekend to rest. And, you know, in the moment, I think I felt like working would distract me and working would make me feel better. And, and maybe in the moment I did, like, I'm not, I don't want to judge myself too much for, for that, but it's like, even after I didn't rest and I was just go, 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 go. All of that will build up to the point where I crack and I'll have a day where I'm finally just so exhausted that I crack. For me, it, hap it happened last weekend. I had a beautiful day. I was working out a ton. I was like teaching and then going to classes and then I went to an event and I came home and I was so tired and I just like couldn't stop crying. I, I like, I cracked. I felt angry, I felt tired. I just felt all of these emotions and these like freak out moments, I call them, they're not foreign to me. They've started happening much fewer and farther between. And I've been able to identify that when that happens, it's not me. It's not because there's something wrong with me. I used to think that it meant there was something wrong with me. It was like, oh, I can't control my emotions. Like I must be crazy. There must be something wrong with me. Um, and now I'm like, no, you're just tired. Like when I have this ball of emotion that explodes, it's because I'm exhausted. And there's often also a correlation with if I'm exhausted and my period's coming, it doesn't happen every time my period comes, but the exhaustion paired with the PMS will lead to like that explosion of emotions. And I felt horrible and I felt so drained after it was, it was just awful. But did I stop? Did I rest? Did I take care of myself this past week? No, I kept going. I taught a whole bunch of bar classes. I taught, I think six bar classes this week. We hosted family for Easter. And again, it was again on Saturday, I had that explosion of emotion and I was crying and I was upset and I was just like feeling so horrible. It wasn't as bad as the first one, but again. So finally yesterday morning, I was like enough, enough. Like you are like, in continuing to push and when I have those freak out moments and then right away my reaction is to like, okay, go do something productive, go like, go wake up early, go whatever. I'm only hurting myself and I don't wanna do that anymore. And really all it takes is like one day, one day of rest and taking care of yourself to already feel so much better. Of course we have to work within the timelines that we have. For example, on Saturday night when I knew I was exhausted, I was teaching a bar class at 9 a.m. the next day. I couldn't just call and be like, yeah, I'm not coming. Like I had to show up, I had to get up early. So that's why I promised myself, okay, on Monday, you're gonna take care of yourself. Even just half a day sometimes is enough or letting yourself sleep in a bit. These little things make such a difference. So all that to say, I promised myself that today would be dedicated to rest and self-care and it's currently, it's about 2.30 and I can honestly say that the morning has totally been dedicated to that. I slept in, 
I had a nice breakfast. I went for a beautiful long walk with my friend who was also on vacation today. Came home, ate some Easter leftovers for lunch, watched Sex in the City, and now here we are. So I'm already feeling so much better, but I just wanted to do a few more, just kind of little at home free, like pampering things to really, really set the tone, really, really relax and feel like I'm taking care of myself and showing myself some love so that I can wake up feeling good and rested and ready for a new month tomorrow ready to set goals, ready to think about finances, ready to do laundry, ready to work again, because all of that today I'm not ready for. There's a huge pile of laundry in my closet and I'm, I'm the laundry in chief of the house and I'm like, I'm not touching it today. I'm not, it's gonna wait. So why don't we get into a little bit of self-care. Oh, my leg's asleep. First things first, I need to go start running a bath. So I wanted to chat a little bit about like self-care and body care and things I like to do at home to just like make me feel better. Some of this stuff we've talked about before, some of this we've never really talked about before and I feel like I'm crooked. So you guys know I like to talk a lot about budgeting and things I like to spend my money on, things I don't like to spend my money on and one area that I still don't spend money on is like facials going out and getting waxed, just like that kind of body care stuff because I really do feel like it's quite easy to do at home. I also tend to be a little bit more minimalist, especially when it comes to the face. Like I, I don't know, I just don't really have a big desire to go get facials or anything like that. Same thing with my hair. Like I don't really go out and get treatments done. I don't put color on my hair. Like I don't go get blowouts. The only thing I do is get it cut once in a while, which actually I just got a haircut and the funny thing is my vlogs are gonna be like a little bit out of order because I want you guys to see this right at the beginning of the month and then the next vlog you probably see will be like a spring refresh, which I actually filmed before this one. So they're gonna be a little bit out of order, but anyways. All that to say, I wanted to show you guys like what I'm using at home that in the long run ends up helping me save money. And obviously none of this is essential or things you need to do, but sometimes they just help me kind of feel a little bit better. So dry brushing, I've showed you guys this before. I bought this from Brow Bar. They sell these a lot at like natural food shops and stuff. It's just, you just brush it over your body. I really need to do this today because I am so dry and crusty in terms of my skin, like my body skin. And then I also have this brush, which is a dry brush, which is a dry brush for the face. It's a really, really nice brush. Ooh, you guys see that? And this I got from a health food shop. This is something that I honestly need to take the time to do more often. Like ideally I would do this every day or every few days. I probably do it once every few weeks to be honest. But when I do do it, I do it before going into the bath or the shower. So that'll be like step one. The thing that I don't talk about super often is like hair removal and shaving and all that kind of stuff. But today is a shaving day. I actually have had laser hair removal done. I did it about, I started it about five years ago. I started it actually when I was in Australia. I did four sessions and then I came home and did four sessions here in Montreal it was good it was very painful it was a lot of money it was actually really cheap in Australia and then like really expensive when I got back here so here I spent a lot of money on it and I feel like there were areas where it really worked and areas where it didn't work so well I got it done on my legs just my lower leg I got it done on my underarms and I got my Brazilian done the Brazilian is actually the one that worked the best. I no longer have hair on like my bikini area, but I still do get, but, but <laughs> this is, this conversation is for the girls. Okay. By the way, I should have, you know, said that in advance, but I still do get some hair on like the pubic bone area. It just grows back a lot slower. So I'm really happy with the results there. Obviously that area is so personal and it's up to every individual what they want to do. I barely, <laughs> can't do this. I barely shave it anymore because it just doesn't really need it. But like every once in a while, kind of, you know? My legs, I probably shave once every two to three weeks. The laser did work really well in reducing the amount of hair I have on my legs, but it still does grow back quite quickly. You just don't really see it as much because there's much less hair. So I do that once every two, three weeks, but today I'm due. And then my armpits is the area that it worked the, the least. I don't know why. I heard that it, your armpits are actually very hormonal. So this area actually grows back like really fast. 
yeah, I don't know. It's like the area where I work the least well. So these I shave like probably once a week. Okay, staying on the topic of hair removal, we're really getting personal here, you guys. Like we are officially besties now. I am terrified to do any hair removal to my mustache. Um, I'm, I'm just terrified. I think I mentioned this once in a video where I went to get my eyebrows done and the girl was like, mustache too? And I was like, ugh. Um, but I said no because I'm literally so afraid of it growing back like strong or intense. For years, I've been using this bleach. It's just like a gentle formula that will bleach kind of like the peach fuzz in your mustache area. I've never had any issues with this. It just lightens the hair so that you kind of don't really see it anymore. One of these packs is $5 and it lasts forever. Obviously you don't need to do this and I never feel like I need to. I will go a really long time. Like I've gone years without doing this, but recently, I don't know, I was just looking at myself in the mirror and I was like, yeah, I'm ready to bleach again. And it lasts a long time. So it's just something that I do kind of infrequently, but I just like having this at home. So I am actually gonna do this today. It's so funny. There's like a little powder that you mix with a cream and then you put it on your mustache, leave it for about 10 minutes and then it's bleached. The last thing I wanna talk about is eyebrows. So about five years ago, I decided to stop getting my eyebrows done. I used to get my eyebrows thread once a month like I needed to get my eyebrows done they would thread everywhere um, and then when I was in Australia I didn't have my normal threading girl the heat I think was making my eyebrows grow so fast and I just said F it I'm growing out my eyebrows so I was only plucking the kind of unibrow area and I grew out my eyebrows and honestly you guys I think it was the best thing I ever did like I'm pretty proud of my eyebrows it's a feature of my face that I really like I'm so glad I, I never ever, this area I never touch anymore. No touching, um, no, 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 no. Best decision I ever made, but it was hard. Like <laughs> it was pretty awkward for a few months growing them out. Anyways, this is really TMI and really weird of me, but most recently I just got really fed up of plucking the hairs in between my eyebrows. I felt like I was always plucking. It felt so annoying. So I decided to let it grow out. And I was like, well, what if I just grew up my unibrow? Like what would happen? I wondered if it would kind of be like the mustache where it would be like peach fuzz. So I haven't tweezed for like, I don't know, maybe even a month. Like I haven't tweezed for a really long time in between my eyebrows and I can't stand it anymore. The hairs are dark, the hairs are visible <laughs> and I can't do it. So I need to pluck my unibrow today. It's just like out of control. I got this compact mirror with like a 10x <laughs> so i need to like oh my gosh like it's crazy it really really like oh my gosh we're gonna do the first one together is this weird i feel like this is what me and camilla would do together oh my god so satisfying so i tried i did an experiment oh my god you guys like you don't understand how many hairs there are it's insane oh that's like gotta be my Lebanese jeans because honestly, this is like so much hair. So I'm gonna sit in the bath and pluck my eyebrows <laughs> and bleach my mustache. But this is like, this is like the therapy that I need. Like this is like the time to myself and just resting and I'm gonna put sex in the city in the background while I do it. I bring my laptop in the bathroom. This is what I need. This is new, but I'm obsessed with it. It's a body scrub from Youth to the People. I wish you guys could smell it. Oh, it's full of water because I obviously keep it in the shower. Anyways, it smells like the spa and it's fantastic. I would rather purchase a product like this than say go get like some kind of scrubbing treatment done at the spa or something because this is just going to last so much longer and I can do it on my own time and I can do it over and over again. So I definitely recommend this. The last thing I wanted to show you guys, actually two last things. First last thing is just that I'm gonna put some hair oil in my hair and then wash it. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys, I was gonna do this today, but I've actually decided not to just because my skin is a little bit too dry right now. But this is a new self tanner from Nuda that I'm going to be trying. This is a self tanning water for the body and then a self tanning water for the face. I've heard amazing things about this company, so I haven't tried it yet, but I'm really, really excited to, and I have high hopes. So I think I'm gonna do this later in the week. My face just feels really, really dry today and itchy, and same with my, my skin. So I wanna take today to do everything I just showed you and then load myself up with moisturizer. Like sit on the couch, stew in the moisturizer, and then I'll put the self tanner on tomorrow or the next day. So those are all my current like at home spa products. I've loved doing this kind of thing ever since I was a teenager. 
just with like my little core group of products and I would call it having a spa day. I would have an at-home spa day. So I love that. I'm gonna put everything back in the bag. And let's go have a gorgeous pampering bath. Good afternoon, everyone. It's the next day, and I'm just getting geared up to make some juice. I bought these oranges and grapefruits when they were on sale, and then I just, I don't know why, I just wasn't really in the mood for juice lately, and they're gonna go bad. So instead of like doing, ooh, like this one's already kind of gone, starting to go bad. Anyways, Instead of doing one juice at a time like I normally do, I'm just gonna make a whole bunch and I think then I will be inclined to drink it. It's insane how many grapefruits and oranges it takes to like even get just a little bit of juice. I'm starting to feel so much better. Oh, this one's like half bad. It looks fine, but I'll just use this half. I definitely still feel quite tired, but we're getting better. My problem right now, you guys, is that I am so into a court of mist and fury. Like all I wanna do is sit on the couch and read and just go through that book and find out what happens. Oh, this grapefruit is not good. Oh no, no, no. I feel like I might have waited too long. Okay, this orange is fine. I'm just gonna cut them all to start. But yeah, it's the complete opposite of how I felt about the first book. So I'm pretty happy to like be into it because there's honestly no better feeling than just reading a book that you're loving. Like it's, it's just so fun. So I'm glad I stuck with this series and yeah, I've heard it just keeps getting better and better. So I'll keep you guys posted. I'm about halfway through the second book. So today so far has just been a work day. I think I could have used honestly a second day of doing nothing, but of course I have deadlines and it's just stuff to work on, stuff to do. So I'm just kind of taking things one step at a time. The next thing I wanna do with you guys is talk about my money goals. So I'm gonna finish making this juice and then we'll head over to my desk.
Just the other day, I posted my in-depth money reset video where we do my cash envelopes, we build my budget, all of my reflections. The past couple of months, I was including them in the monthly resets, but I feel like people prefer when I do them on their own and it's like a full 35 to 40 minute video. So you can check that out if you haven't seen it yet. If you wanna see my really, really in-depth thoughts, planning, plus the cash stuffing for the month. Now, what I wanna chat with you guys about today, there's two things. The first thing is actually a new category that I'm adding to my budget. So this past weekend was Easter, of course, and we hosted my family and then we hosted JS's family over for dinner. So we had dinner Saturday and dinner Sunday night. I feel like I've really, really in my life taken for granted what it takes to host people and buying the groceries and all of the effort. Um, so this weekend was kind of a reality check for me of how much it really costs, really just in groceries and alcohol, things like that, snacks, desserts, if you're, whatever you're buying to have people over. You're gonna find out, but I think I spent over $200 and that was just for my half of like the hosting bill, if you will. I'm happy to do it and this is not by any means me complaining. This is me figuring out a way to put it in my budget because it honestly just felt so nice to have people over. I've been hosted so many times by my family and by my friends and being in a place where I feel like I'm finally ready to return the favor. I'm more confident in the kitchen, wanting to try new recipes. I love the way my home looks and I'm so excited to be able to invite people in. So I definitely do wanna make space in my budget for hosting and I don't want it to come out of my groceries category because I just don't think that makes sense. Spending $200 for one weekend is pretty much spending half of my grocery budget in one weekend, so that doesn't make sense. And then secondly, if I were to look at my categories at the end of the year or in a six month check-in, hosting people and these kind of special events would skew the grocery budget much higher. So I've decided to add to my budget tracker a new category called special events. I thought of including this in just like holidays, maybe including it with Christmas, but Christmas is such a big celebration unto itself, all of the gifts that come along with it. So I'm going to keep this separate. This could also be things like having people over for a barbecue or really just any type of hosting. We'll just kind of play by ear and see what else falls into this category. But to start, this is what I am naming it. So I need to go in to my expense log and add in these purchases. I went to the grocery store and spent, my first trip to the grocery store cost 143.59. And then I had to go back to the grocery store because we needed like some cheese and crackers and stuff and that cost 23.13. Then I realized that I forgot some ingredients so I had to go over to the corner store and that was 15.63. So now if we go over and look at March, we can see that new category has been added and that I spent $182. So while we're here talking about March, let's talk a little bit about my money goals. So I said that April was going to be the month where I really, really get my finances together and start making big strides towards my financial goals for the year. My biggest financial goal of the year is contributing $20,000 towards my RRSP. So that's a monthly goal of $1,000 and then putting in bonus money whenever I can with the goal of reaching a full $20,000. My second goal is to fill up a bunch of my different sinking funds, my savings funds. So we have the emergency fund, which is currently filled up all the way, the Maggie fund, the vacation fund, and my car fund. So at the end of the month, once I've done my budgeting, I've done my cash envelopes, I've paid off my credit cards, I like to see how much money I have left in, let's say my checking account. And I like to clear a lot of that money away. I like every dollar I have to have a home because if money is just sitting in my checking account, I will spend it like 100%. So at the end of March, the money that I had to put towards savings was $2,217, which is really amazing. I'm so grateful to have had a pretty high earning month and be able to have this much money left over to contribute towards my goals. So the first thing I wanna do actually is take $217 and use most of that to cover the spending that I did for Easter weekend. It's a little bit over, so I'll just leave the rest in my checking account or just put extra money towards my credit card bill. So at least I can go into April knowing that the special weekend was covered and I'm not gonna be like, ugh, at the end of the month when I have to pay it off. The next thing I wanna do is get that green check mark and check off the sending $1,000 to my retirement investments. I said investments, but it's really just one fund that I've been putting this money towards. 
So that leaves me with $1,000 to put in to savings. I definitely want to contribute to my vacation savings and I was thinking first that I would just put the full thousand dollars towards that. However, I also need to start contributing towards Maggie's sinking fund. The end goal is a thousand dollars and it's just not something that I'm like excited to save for. I feel like expenses related to Maggie are things that I would rather just deal with when they come up, but I know that having a buffer will make me feel so good. So instead of just sending the full 1000 towards vacation and then spending it and then just constantly refilling the vacation and never focusing on my other sinking funds, I'm going to do $500 to my vacation fund and $500 towards my Maggie fund. And that basically wraps up my budgeting for the month of March, moving into April, having achieved some pretty awesome goals. It feels really, really good. And we get to check them off in my budget tracker. So we can say that we're putting 500 to the Maggie fund, 500 to vacation, nothing to car and nothing to Christmas right now. We also get to check off the RRSP, the sinking fund, and I did kick off my $100,000 net worth journey. I'm also gonna go in here and put in that $1,000 towards my RRSP. So that feels so good, you guys. Now, the last step of this monthly reset is for me to sit down with my gentle productivity planner. I'm gonna make a tea and just reflect on the upcoming month, figure out which of the goals we talked about at the beginning of the video are kind of closest to my heart and most important and set a theme for the month and all of that. Another one of my favorite parts of my monthly reset routine is taking a little bit of time to write in my gentle productivity planner. Inside this planner, there is a monthly journal page every single month for your monthly reset with space to write down the theme for the month, your affirmation of the month, some reflections, goals, and a space for manifesting. For the month of April, my themes are money, rest, and flow. I have two affirmations for the month. It's time to rest and abundance and opportunity flow when I take a step back. Some of the dreams that I am manifesting have to do with feeling more like a bar instructor, feeling more confident in that job. Finally trying reformer Pilates or something Pilates related, some brand deals and stuff for work as well as progress on Maggie's training. So you guys, that is a wrap on my monthly reset for the month of April. Thank you so much for watching this video and taking the time to reset with me. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video.